Welcome to the castle everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42 and this is Character Vault where we go through the whole character creation process from start to finish on different RPG systems. And today we are going to be taking a look at Traveler, the core rulebook. This is the updated 2022 version. So if you have the previous books, it pretty much all works the same way from what I've gathered. The only thing that's really different are the new shipbuilding chapters later on in the book. But character creation is going to be the same. And it's actually a really fun and intuitive process. I really have a lot of fun making characters in Traveler. I've made several on practice runs so far and in preparation for this video. And I gotta say, uh, for character creation, it's best if you do this as a group, if you're playing with a group of people. That way you can all basically have fun rolling the random stuff that happens and intertwining events and stuff like that. So anyways, let's get into the things that we need. First off, you're going to need the Traveler Core Rulebook and its accompanying character sheet, which I've printed off here on both sides. Some things that are that we're going to be leaving off from the character sheet are things like uh, morale, luck, sanity, charm, psionic, and other. We don't really need that, at least at this point. We might luck into psionic later, but that's 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 a really lucky occurrence for us. Other than that, we're going to be needing a pencil, and yes, you will need a pencil because you're going to be erasing quite a bit, and you're also going to need at least two six-sided dies. So let's open up the book and see what we're going to need further. Right off the bat, we're going to need access to the characteristic modifiers, especially if you're coming from Dungeons and Dragons, because the dice modifiers in relation to the characteristic scores are actually vastly different. So for a, if you have a characteristic score of 0, you're going to have a dice modifier of minus 3. 1 to 2 is minus 2. 3 to 5 is minus 1. 6 to 8 is plus 0. 9 to 11 is plus 1. 12 to 14 is plus 2, and anything above 15 is plus 3. Now, you should make a note that 15 is the maximum score that your character can have unaugmented. You can get augmentations that allow you to go above 15, but we're not going to need to know that for now. Also, we're going to have access to six different characteristics that are separated into two categories from physical to mental characteristics. These are going to be things like strength, dexterity, endurance for the physical side. For the mental side, we have intellect, education, and social standing, which is a traveler's place in society, which is actually really cool. Other than that, we get a nice handy-dandy chart on page 14 about... All the different steps and I really do appreciate this chart because you're going to be going back and forth starting with your determining your characteristics you're going to determine your background and background skills then you get the option to have a pre-career education either enlisting in a university or enlisting in the military academy then we'll start our new term which means we get to choose a career and actually start to uh, flesh out some skills even further. We'll make a survival roll. We'll either trigger an event or a mishap. We'll advance or we'll try to roll for advancement in that specific career. And then we get to decide if we're going to continue. If we choose not to continue, then we'll muster out and we'll get some benefits or cash. And then we can either choose to enlist in a new career or just go ahead and end character creation. Now, if we choose to continue with the same career that we are in, then we would go back to starting a new term. And then we'll just repeat the whole process. Now, I should mention right off the bat that we are actually going to start on the age of 18, and that would bring us to our pre-career education if we decide to do that. And then every time we start a new term, we will increase our age by four years. So the increments would be 18, 22, 26, 30, 34, and so on. When we get to age 34, if we should be so lucky to make it that far, then we will have to start rolling for aging. But that's neither here nor there. We might actually have to roll for that. We might not. My One of my previous characters, I think I only made it to the age of 30 before I decided to uh, go out with the dilettante and just leave it at that. So that's all there is for character creation. 
I will be separating this video not in terms of, you know, characteristic background, pre-career. I'm actually going to separate it in terms of actual terms. So the first term will be its own section. The second term will be its own section and so forth and so on. A little bit different than how I normally do these character creation videos. So let's get started with term number one. So here I have my character cre my character sheet. We are going to start off as age 18. Our term is going to be one for now. Our home world, let's just go ahead and say that's gonna be Terran, although it could change. I could be playing in a homebrew galaxy or system and I might not have access to Terran, but oh well. We are going to play as human. There are two different alien species within the core rulebook 2022 version, but I'm not really going to go ahead and deal with that. I just want to be a straight up human, try to make it as easy as I can. And the first thing we need to do, we need to roll characteristics. We're going to roll 2d6 for every characteristic, and we're just going to go from strength all the way down to social. And let's hope we get some good stuff. So our first one, strength, is a 11. That's actually quite close to what I got in my last previous character when I was practicing. And 11 is going to give us a plus one dice modifier bonus. For dexterity, we have a six, which is not that bad. Six actually gives us a plus zero. Endurance, we have an 11. All right, look at that. Plus one for dice modifier yet again. We might start thinking about, you know, maybe a military academy. Depends on what we have in intellect, maybe. We have a seven in intellect, which gives us a plus zero. So far, these are probably the best stats I've actually ever rolled in Traveler. I don't have any minuses to my any of my dice modifiers until now. Education, that's going to be a three. This symbol is actually my one. Yes, it is. So that's a three. That means we are going to have a minus one. Not terrible, but, you know, we're not that educated. And that's actually going to haunt us here in just a second. Our social standing is nine, which actually is just below the threshold for getting some pretty good like automatic benefits. If we had a social of 10, then we'd be able to do, I believe, like the uh, noble class, like straight up off the bat. So there is that. So now we need to decide what our background skills are. And we get to choose education dice modifier plus three. And unfortunately, that's going to be plus two for us with our minus one uh, DM. Okay, so our background skills are on page nine or rather our beginning background skills. So before embarking on your careers, you receive a number of background skills equal to your education dice modifier plus three. So zero to six, depending on your education score, chosen from the list down here. This represents the knowledge you have picked up during adolescence and will allow you to function at a basic level in a technological society. We have access to admin, animals, art, athletics, carouse, drive, electronics, flyer, language, mechanic, medic, profession, science, seafarer, streetwise, survival, and vac suit. At this point, you are 18 years old and ready to take on the universe. Well, not quite there just yet, but why don't we pick out our background skills? Now, we have really great strength and endurance. So we're definitely going to take athletics as one of our skills, and that's going to be athletic strength, since our strength is higher than our dexterity, and that's going to be at level zero. This means we don't get any negatives to actually making a skill check for athletic strength. If we were untrained in any of the skills that we try to make a skill check on, we'd get a minus three penalty to that skill check. I'm also going to take drive and that is going to be maybe drive hovercraft or hover car, uh, whatever the, the hovercrafts are called in this game. And that uses dexterity, which we have an average dexterity, so I'm not going to complain on that. So those are the two skills that we will get. We get athletic strength and drive hovercraft or whatever it's called. And that takes care of our background skills. Now... We only get two because of our education dice modifier being at a negative one. 
With that out of the way, we get to decide if we're going to enlist in the university or in a military academy. Now, the cool thing about this is that there's different entry requirements for each. If we wanted to enlist in a university, we would need to roll on an Education 6 Plus. That means we'd have to roll over a 6. If we wanted to enlist in the military, we'd have to decide if we wanted to do Army, Marines, or the Navy. The Army requires an endurance of a 7 plus, Marines endurance 8 plus, and Navy intelligence 8 plus. And we can definitely do either Army or Marines since we have that plus one to our endurance. So I think what we're going to try to do here with our unnamed character is try to enlist in the Marines. And that requires an endurance 8 plus roll. So we're going to roll 2d6, add our endurance bonus, which is plus one, and hope for the best. We get a 9, so we are able to enlist in the Military Academy under the Marines. So that will actually take the place of our first term here, and we'll just write Military Academy. We gain all service skills of the military career the Academy is tied to at level 0 as with basic training. So let's go over to the Marines, which is... So our service skills are athletics, vac suit, tactics, heavy weapons, gun combat, and stealth. We acquire all of those at level zero. If we already have one at level zero, then unfortunately it just doesn't go through. So we already have athletics, don't have vac suit, tactics, heavy weapons, gun combat, and stealth. We get all of those at level zero, which is actually pretty cool. And then we get to decide or ch see if we can graduate. We need an intelligence of seven plus. Our intelligence modifier is at plus zero, so we're okay there. If 11 plus is rolled, graduate with honors. We get a DM plus one if our endurance is eight or higher, which we have. So we get a plus one to our, our roll and DM plus one if social eight or higher. So we actually get a DM plus two bonus overall because our social is high and so is our endurance. So let's go ahead and roll. We get a plus two bonus, so we need to be a seven. So let's see what we get. We have an eight or five plus one is six plus two bonus is eight. So we do not graduate with honors. That's okay. If entering the same military career the academy is tied to, select any three service skills and increase them to level one. All right, that's pretty sweet. We are going to get gun combat, heavy weapons to one for sure. And also let us get athletics up to one as well. Increase education by plus one. That's actually fairly good, although that does not increase our dice modifier. That's unfortunate. If the traveler graduated with honors, increase social by plus one as well. We did not, but our social is actually pretty good. Graduation allows automatic entry into the military career the academy is tied to, so long as it is the first career attempted by the traveler after graduation. Graduation allows a commission role to be taken before the first term of a military career, so long as it is the first career chosen after university, with plus two DM. Success will mean the traveler enters the career at officer rank one. If graduation was with honors, traveler will automatically pass this role. All right. In order to make our commission, we need a social of eight plus, And I believe we get bonuses for that as well with the DM plus two. So overall, we get a plus three bonus. We got a 14, which is nice. So that means we automatically, that means we get officer rank one. All right. So instead of being enlisted, we are actually on the officer track, which means we actually get some bonus skills as well. We are now lieutenant and we get leadership one, which is a nice bonus to have. So one thing to make mention of real quick, we actually did skip some steps here. 
since we enlisted in the academy and we were able to actually automatically go into the career. Now our pre-career education actually takes up a, a term, so we're actually age 22 right now and we've automatically started a new term. We basically skipped survival event advancement and all of that because of going through the whole pre-career track. Um, basically, if you're going through university or the military academy, just follow these steps and you will be fine. Only thing that we forgot to do is to uh, roll for our pre-career event. For any term a traveler spends in pre-career education, roll on the pre-career event table. As with career events, other travelers may be linked to the connections rule, although it's just us. So we're just going to roll 2d6 and see what we get. We got an 8. You join a political movement, roll social 8 plus. If successful, you become a leading figure, gain one ally with the movement, but gain one enemy in wider society. That's really interesting. So let's roll our social. Remember, we get a plus one bonus for social. We got a nine overall. So we get an ally, which I will name a little bit later. And we also gain an enemy in wider society, which is very interesting. So already we're becoming a little bit famous due to our social background, which is really cool. So now we're on track to starting a new term on the Marine track. And we've already made rank one officer, but we need to decide which career we're actually going to take. That means we need to either do support, star marine, or ground assault. Support means you are a quartermaster, engineer, or battlefield medic in the Marines. And you can see some of the skills that they require here. Electronics mechanic, driver flyer, medic, heavy weapons, and gun combat. We have Star Marine. You are trained to fight boarding actions and capture enemy vessels. They have access to VAC suit, athletics, gunner, melee with blades, electronics, and gun combat. And then we have Ground Assault. You are kicked out of a spacecraft in high orbit and told to capture that planet. We have VAC suit, heavy weapons, recon, melee blades, tactics, military, and gun combat. And I think we're probably going to be on track to doing ground assault. Mainly because our survival is at 7+, plus, which we'll have to roll here in just a bit. But advancement in this track is actually at an education 5+, plus, which is actually quite doable for us. All right, so let us roll for survival. We need an endurance seven plus. We have an 11 or rather 12. So we definitely survive, which means we get to roll for an event, which is a 2d6 roll for us. We have an 11. 11, you, your commanding officer takes an interest in your career. Either gain Tactics 1 or DM plus 4 to your next advancement roll thanks to their aid. Oof, that's actually a really big choice that we get to make because our Tactics is at level 0 right now. Or we can take a DM plus 4 for advancement. I think I'm going to take the DM plus 4 to our advancement. So what we'll do, we will roll for advancement and our advancement is at a education five plus. We get a plus four bonus, but also a minus one because our education is at minus one. Um, so that's gonna be a plus three overall. All right, we got ourselves a 12, which is nice. So now we become a rank two captain. We will increase our age by another four. So we are at 26. We will continue in the same career. I think that's actually something really good for us to, to keep on with. And we are not age 34, so we don't need to roll for aging. So that means we will go all the way back to, we're going to go all the way back to starting a new term. Choose a career and roll for qualifications. Our qualification is at Endurance 6+. Plus. Uh, this is our first career, so we don't get a DM-1 for that, and we're not age 30 or more. 
So let us roll our endurance six plus. And we get a seven with our endurance plus one dice modifier. We get to choose a skill table and roll and see what we get. Now we have a different, a couple different ways that we can go about this. We can choose personal development. We can get a service skill. We don't meet the minimum education requirement for advanced education, but since we are on the officer commission track, we can go ahead and get one of those, or we can of course go for ground assault. I think I'm actually going to roll for ground assault here. So that's only going to be a 1d6 and we'll see what we get an increase in. We have a five, which is tactics military. So our tactics military is going up to a one from zero to one, which is not bad. After that, we get to roll for survival, 2d6. which we have an 11, which is actually a 12. So we do get to roll for our event. So 2d6, a six, you are assigned to an assault on an enemy fortress. Roll melee or gun combat eight plus and gain tactics, military or leadership if you succeed. If you fail, you are injured and lose one point from any physical characteristic. Oof. All right, so let us take a look and see what we have. We have Gun Combat 1, so we will go ahead and roll for that. We need, that means we get a plus 1 and a dex bonus for that as well. So overall plus 2. That is a 7, 8, 9, so we do get 8 plus. Let us get leadership at 2. Since we get an increase of either leadership or tactics military and we get to go to an advancement our advancement is education 5 plus so we still have that minus 1 DM so hopefully this will turn out we have a 5 right on the die all right so we get to advance to rank 3 which is force commander which means we gain tactics level 1 Unfortunately, we already have tactics at one, so that's going to be a bust. We'll increase our age. We are now age 30, and we get to choose whether we're going to continue in the same career or... And I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to at least stay with this career for one more turn. We're going to roll for qualification, endurance 6+. plus. All right, we got a seven, so we stay within this career track. We get to choose a skill, and I'm thinking we're going to go for ground assault yet again. So that's gonna be one D6. We got a six, which is gun combat, which I'm actually really thankful for. Our gun combat is now at level two, and we get to roll for survival. Survival is endurance seven plus. If we are age 30 or more, we get a DM minus two. So we only get a minus one since our endurance was plus one. Uh-oh, here we go. Oh boy, we rolled a five, which is unfortunately going to be a roll on the mishap table, which is going to be a 1d6, a five. You are tormented by or quarrel with an officer or fellow Marine. Gain that character as a rival as they drive you out of the service. Oh boy. So, rival. Military rival. I'm gonna name him Jack. So, unfortunately, we no longer get to advance in this rank or in this career. So, what we'll do instead, we're going to increase our age by four years. So, now we're 34. And we get to muster out before starting a new career. So for mustering out, we get to roll for benefits or cash. And this will not be our final muster out, so we don't have to worry about pension or medical debt. I'm going to roll on the benefits table. So that's going to be a 1d6. And we got a 5, which is a TAS membership, which is actually quite good. Um, a TAS membership is actually quite pricey, 
and it allows us to gain some sort of benefits with the Travelers Association. And that's, that will be more effective in like ports and docks and stuff like that. So we might get a nice hotel room um, with our TAS membership or other benefits like that. It's equivalent to being part of the Pathfinder Society or Starfinder, or Starfinder Society um, in those respective games. So it's actually pretty cool to have. I'm glad we rolled that. So now we get to roll for a new career. Oh boy. Quite fun. So other careers that we have access to are things like agent. Oh, we're probably going to skip the military for now. We can do citizen. Drifter is going to be an automatic qualification for if we fail at qualifying for any other career we automatically gain into drifter we could become an entertainer no for marines we could be merchant no for navy we could be noble which i'm not really sold on to we could be a rogue a scholar or a scout and all of those have some pretty interesting qualifications especially with our intelligence which is actually at a zero so we actually stand somewhat of a chance of doing alternatively we could just roll a straight up a d 2d6 and see what we come up with i guess or roll a d12 i guess is however many careers there are i think there's 12 yes there's 12 so we could roll a d12 and see what we roll into but that would be not the most effective way of doing things so I think something that would benefit our character the most is after being dropped from the service, he actually became a merchant. And I'm actually thinking of doing the Merchant Marine. You work on one of the massive cargo haulers run by the Imperium or a mega corporation. Of course, we will have to qualify and the qualification is actually quite low. It's an intelligence four plus, but we do get the DM minus one because we were in a different career. Let's see if we make it. We get a minus one dice modifier, and we have a six. All right, so we are now a merchant. So we do get to decide if we're going to take on personal development or the merchant marine. And I would like to probably roll for merchant marine. Let's do that. We'll roll 1d6. We got a five, which is engineer. Mm, probably not the best of our skills, especially if we use education, but I believe we can also use in intellect for that role. So our engineering is going to be at zero and I will figure out specifically what that will entail at a later time. Now we get to roll for survival. Our survival role is going to be education five plus, which is, well, it's not great. So let's see what we get. We have a six with our minus one. All right, so we do survive, which means we get to roll on the events table. So 2d6, we got an eight. You are embroiled in legal trouble. Gain one of advocate one, admin one, diplomat one, or investigate one. Then roll 2d. If you roll two, you must take the prisoner career in your next term. Oh boy. Okay, first off, let's see what we're going to roll. Let us go with investigate one. That seems like a nice handy skill for us to have. And now we need to roll 2D. Now I've not rolled two ones at all in this game yet. So, all right. We do not take the prisoner career in our next turn, which is nice. All right. So that is our survival and event. We get to roll for advancement. Our advancement roll is seven plus. Um, oh boy, not super good, but we might pass. Oof, six, that's unfortunate. So we will stay at a rank zero. Now we did fail on our advancement roll. And the thing is, if your advancement roll is equal to or less than the number of terms you have spent in this career, which is one, then you cannot continue in this career after this term. Either your services are no longer required or events have caused you to leave or perhaps you are simply bored and want a new challenge. Now, we did not get a one. 
So that means we can stay in this career, but we do stay at a rank zero. Now, we are going to bump up our age. So we're now age 38. The effects of aging begin when a traveler reaches 34 years of age at the end of their fourth career term. At the end of the fourth term and at the end of every term after, the traveler must roll 2D on the aging table. Use the traveler's total number of terms as a negative DM on this table. The older you are, the heavier the effects of aging will weigh upon you. The traveler may choose which characteristics are affected by aging. And I will actually have to roll twice for the aging. One for our previous um, career, which I forgot to do after our mishap, and once for our current term. So let's start with our current or with our military aging. We got a six, two sixes, so that's 12. Um, total number of terms as a negative on this table. So the total number of terms would have been four, so we are at eight. So basically we only have to worry about aging if we roll a zero or we get a zero or below. So anything that's negative. So we're good for that. Now we get to roll again for aging. This time our term is going to be at a minus five. All right, so we got a Ted, so we still have a five. So no aging effects just quite yet. So that's actually really good <laughs> for us. I think we're still going to stay within this career for at least one more term. So let us go back to starting a new term. We will roll for qualifications. We'll still get that minus one for our previous career. And we got ourselves a five. Next, we get to roll on a skill. I'm still thinking of having a going under the Merchant Marine, although there really isn't much that I want there. So let's go for personal development. We're gonna roll 1d6 and see what we get. We got a five, which is language. Ugh. Of all the useless things I did not want. Oh well. I will decide upon which language I will have access to at a later time. Let us roll for survival. Our survival roll is at an education five plus. All right, we got a six, not bad. So we'll roll on the events table. So that's 2d6 and nine. You are given advanced training in a specialist field. Roll education eight plus to increase any one skill you already have by one level. Holy cow, that's actually really good. Let's hope that we get that education A+. Plus. Oof. Unfortunately, our education dice modifier is at a minus one, so we barely just missed that. We have a seven on the total. Oh boy. So we do not get to increase our any skill by one. That's unfortunate. Let us see if we can advance in this career. Our advancement is intellect seven. Let's see what we got. That's five. Again, we're just staying at the bottom of the chain. We are just a crewman. <laughs> uh, oh, well. So we're going to increase our age by four yet again. So we're now 42 years old. We are not going to continue any longer. In fact, we're kind of going to be done with character creation. So that means we are going to muster out. We're going to roll for benefits and cash. So in the course of a traveler's career, they may manage to save some money. They may also acquire equipment and other benefits from their previous employers. A scout might be mustered out of service with a reserve scout ship, for example, or a marine might get to keep their combat armor and so on. These are determined by benefits rolls. Benefits are gained when a traveler leaves a career. A traveler gets one benefit roll for every full term served in that career. You also get extra benefit rolls if you reached a high rank. So one of the things that I kind of misspoke about earlier was that I only got to roll once on the military career track. I would actually get to roll twice on the military career track. We only forego that term's benefit roll. So I'm actually going to go back to the uh, marines 
and roll for benefits real fast. Now the thing is, we actually do get some bonus benefits or bonus to our roll. There are two columns for benefits roll in each career, the cash column and the other benefits column. You may only roll on the cash column a maximum of three times across all of your careers. So we will have to actually remember that. But for now, since we're ranked three in the Marines, um, our bonus benefit roll is actually gonna be a plus two. I'm going to keep the TAS membership for now because I kind of forgot, but I will roll a 1d6 and add the plus two. And I am actually going to roll for benefits. I'm not really, I don't really care about cash as much. Oh, <laughs> well, our education is now plus one. So there's that. So education is at five, which is just on the threshold. We're still at a minus one, unfortunately. Oh, well. Okay, so let's go back to the mer merchant. Now, our highest rank is unfortunately at <laughs> zero, so we gain no bonuses to that roll. Okay, so 1D, um, let's see, what do we want? I'm actually going to roll for cash on this one. A two. We get 5,000 credits. Oh, we definitely did not make any... Uh, huh. Smart decisions there. All right, so 5,000 credits to our name. Um, we also get another roll on that, so let's go for cash yet again. A three, that's 10,000. So we're at 15,000, okay. All right, so we have 15,000 credits to our name. Uh, I could have taken education plus one and bumped that DM up to a zero, but oh well. Since this is our final muster out, we need to resolve our pension and our medical debt, which is on page 48. And once again, I am reminded of the aging process, so let us go ahead and roll for aging. We have a minus five, or something like that, or minus six. And so we have no effect on that, nice. So a traveler that leaves a career other than scout, rogue, prisoner, or drifter after at least five terms is considered to have retired and receives a pension. This pension is paid at the beginning of each year, effective upon leaving the service, and may be collected at any class A or B starport. Unfortunately, we never made it to five terms in the Marines, so we actually don't get a pension, and we certainly didn't get a pension with the merchant. We also need to decide if we have any medical care debt. So if you have been injured, then medical care may be able to undo the effects of the damage. Some worlds have the technology to clone or rebuild damaged organs. Others specialize in transplants or cybernetic replacements. Regardless of the technique used, medical care is expensive. The restoration of a lost characteristic costs 5,000 credits per point. If you were injured in the service of an organization, then a portion of your medical care may be paid for. Roll 2d6 on the medical bills table, adding your rank as a DM. Now, fortunately for us, we were actually never injured, so we don't have to worry about any medical bills that have accrued over the course of our career. So that's actually kind of it for character creation. The last thing that we will do with our fellow players as a group, we will actually get to uh, pick a skill package. So as a group, all travelers select one of the following skill packages. These are collections of basic skills you will often use while adventuring. Taking a skill package ensures your group will at least have basic competency in the situations that will come up in the campaign. When you have collectively decided which skill package is most suitable for the style of play and campaign you will embark upon, each traveler takes it in turns to select an item from the package. Keep going until all skills have been selected. So if I'm working with a group of four people, including myself, that means I would take one skill and then somebody else would take another and then another and then another and then we kind of go back and forth until all the skills have been taken. You have things like traveler skill package, which is your all around skill package. You have trader skills, investigator skills, explorer skills, mercenary skills, starship skills, diplomat skills, and criminal skills, depending on what kind of a game that your GM is planning on running. So overall, really nice that you get to flesh out your character even more with a skill package because for the most part, all of these skills that I've been rolling for have been random. And so you probably wouldn't have an optimal build at all, but that's kind of the point of the 
character creation game. And I really do favor this type of a style of, you know, rolling for a character, especially for a sci-fi game. It's just so cool. Of course, there are two different aliens, the Aslan and the Varger. And if you do select one of those, some of your starting stats or characteristics will change. But other than that, that is actually it for character creation in Traveler. So far, we are age 42. We've had an okay career in Marines. We've had an okay career in The Merchant. But, oh well. That is it for us. So feel free to leave a comment down below. Give this video a huge thumbs up to support the series. And subscribe if you would like to see more. I will see you guys in the next video.